Because you got to break this down in two ways. No, no. Okay, okay. This is a white country for white people. Okay. And what works for white people, the same line work for them, don't work for us. If there could be anybody on the planet more evil than the devil is Clinton. And the fact that black folks don't know that all of them probably going to hell. Who is a man that put 1.5 million black men in jail under his watch? There's something wrong with that. Wiped out welfare and didn't give us a replacement. And gave Lockheed a $100 billion contract to train welfare models. It's a game they play. And all them little houses they were supposed to have for Katrina. Remember they found in Arkansas? You remember what town it was? Hope. Who from Hope? Okay. okay. Yeah, we better wake up. Ron Brown didn't die from a plane, but he died from a bullet in the back of his head. The how do I know for the white folks that did the autopsy and brought it to me? Okay? So this is the game. But for black folks, all you gotta do is smile. You know, my mother told me when I was a little boy, said the flower was red, they were hot, belly, eager, snuff dipping, nigga hating crackers. And then one day I got some sense, I said, they don't determine public policy. Public policy is determined by the president of Harvard, Yale, and at and and the University of Chicago, and we seem to like them. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't see, it, see, it wouldn't be bad if America was good at one time, then got bad. I mean, it never been no good. I mean, how can we know that America took smallpox germs and put in blankets for Indians? Huh? Took 600 black women and injected syphilis into them. And we so ignorant and unspiritual and that we don't question where age came from. Please. But that's not their fault, that's our fault. Because when you get so wrapped up in the lie, there's a spiritual thing that you lose. And then one day when black folks understand that poverty and God don't occupy the same space. So if you want to take me someplace where I know God ain't take me to some white or black place, that's heavily poverty stricken and I know that. So, so it's, it's a thing that we get to, see, anytime you try to peacefully coexist with fear, we become fear. And that's what we do. I mean, if I was going to be in your house for a few minutes and a dog had doo-doos all over the floor, I'd like to be there. If I'm going to be there, I'd like to clean it up. I'd like to peacefully uh -huh. coexist. You know, so it's, uh, so that going on over there is, is not our business. We sent our children to die, and now white folks are finally caught up with it and say, wait a minute. But this is, and if we don't ask simple questions, you know, they, they dictate, well, uh, the Mexicans are taking jobs that black folk don't want. I mean, I folk take no peaches at 25 cents an hour, but if you pay me with peaches, kicking the cost, I'm glad they take the job. But it's that whole game. You know, the Chinese saying, the Star Spangled Banner, and Chinese, oh, we said, oh, it's so lovely. They have such compassion for America. The Mexicans did, and they were crazy. Right. But look at when the Mexicans coming out of the streets. Huge numbers. The young folks in France was coming out of the streets in huge numbers. Except the young folks in France was throwing bricks, five of them sitting police cars, and not one of them got shot. If them Mexicans come to the store, one brick at the police, they had to shot them down like they was dogs, and even black folks would be on TV saying, well, you got to respect my families. That's the, that's the difference. You see, and we can just shortcut all of this. You see, when Cynthia McKinney had a little money with the white police, which is the capital police, and even Democrats came out against him. When the Kennedy boy had to run in with the same police. Right, exactly, hmm? exactly. You heard one white newsman say, well, really she told us it was a double standard. Huh? They carried that boy home. But Mr. Gregory, the one thing that, that comes to my mind so very much is you just, you have been, you've been struggling for this, you have been talking for this, you've been demonstrating, you've been all of the above for years and years and years. The last time I saw you in Dayton, Ohio was many, many years ago at a church at Joe Madison. Yes. My question to you is, uh, don't, do you have a, a level of frustration? Uh, do you have... Let me see here. If I walk into the cross, I've got to be stupid to be upset because I didn't see a cross. 
Well, he's a son. Hmm? Marcus, I'm a So, you know, why would I be frustrated if I go to the zoo? Okay. You know what upset me? If I heard a tiger talk. <laughs> or a gorilla cooking eggs. <laughs> I go to the zoo, I expect to see zoo things. Okay, I understand. And so, you know, it's, uh, here's what would bother me. It wouldn't bother me much. If I picked up your favorite real Rockefeller, son or daughter, start to death. Huh. And that's a real more to it to that. But if I read with some homeless guy starting to death, as bad as it is, I'm not shocked. But so, and I read all of the white papers. So, not that I trust them, but I read them to find cracking the fabric. And then once you see that, then you know. But they didn't just start. I mean, the New York Times and all of them are the same. So do you have some hope still? Hope for what? For Well, that's like asking a, a German when the Nazis was in power, do you have hope? There ain't no hope in this country because we gave all the power to a bunch of thugs. You know, so, you know. Oh. You know, it's like if I got 10 children, one of them every time they got a car and hit 130 miles an hour. Something I'm surprised when somebody called me and tell me, you just hit a tree or she just hit a tree. See, one of them took them for long. <laughs> but, See, we look for hope in a filthy system because we don't have the spiritual fiber to understand that I'm part of our king. I'm against the wall. What does that mean? Every time I get on a plane or go buy something, they take my tax money to buy bullets to keep folks with me. So when the reckoning day come, I'm part of it. You know, every time they drop a bomb, a little child over there, part of my money goes for that. So what are you going to talk about? I don't know. Until you get up there, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to just kind of get you. Ah! Ah! I used to tell people that I had a cop come out of the whole house when I said the spirit lives. <laughs> we blame someone to the spirit. Well, no, that's true. Okay, well, I'm going to be listening to you. Yeah, you got any questions? Okay. Okay. I want to thank Craig Powell, the staff, and the volunteers of PowerNet. I want to thank the community sponsors, the presenters, and all of the participants who saw the need and understand the problem. Well, how do you introduce a man like Dick Gregory? <laughs> to say that he is a comedian extraordinaire is certainly not sufficient. To list the many titles included in his biography, civil and human rights activist, philosopher, author, actor, recording artist, nutritionist, and anti-drug crusader doesn't seem sufficient. My favorites are his recording Dick Gregory at Kent State, and I've been asking him how I could find a copy of that because I lent mine to somebody who never returned it. So, is anybody out there uh, I'm looking for that tape? <laughs> of course, you could go and read the biography that's in your program, but I won't say to read along with me because I would rather talk about something that's not there, and you be sure and read what's in your program so that you can know more about this man. My favorite book of his is the book called Nigger, which was published in 1965 and became the number one best-selling book in America. And over the decades, this book has sold over a million copies. Now, what I liked in the book was his choice for the title. He had a forward that he wrote to his mother, and he said, whenever you hear the word nigger, you will know that they are advertising my book. <laughs> Talk about ingenuity. His second autobiography, Counts on My Soul, became a bestseller within weeks of this publication. And Mr. Gregory says that he has lived long enough to be able to need two autobiographies and that he is looking forward to writing the third and fourth volumes as well. Mr. Dick Gregory has participated in marches parades and sit-ins on a variety of causes including opposition to the Vietnam War, drug abuse, the CIA, CIA headquarters about the crack and, uh, epidemic in our community. 
He has fought against segregated schools and more recently, the horrific situation in Dakar. He has fasted on a number of issues, including the time in Iran, when he asked for many to release the American embassy staff who had been taken hostage. And he weighed only 97 pounds when he left Iran. Mr. Dick Gregory and his beloved wife, Lil, who is from this area, had 10 children who have become highly respected members of the national community in a variety of fields. So let's add to this title, Father Extraordinary. <laughs> Mr. Dick Gregory is a change agent. He stands up and speaks up for what he believes in. So how do you introduce Dick Gregory? You simply say, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dick Gregory. Whiskey and a double barrel shotgun. 
and I just wanted to do the other kind of thing for their love that might kill her. <laughs> I, uh, first thing I do when I hit town, I pick up the paper. Uh, you see, most of y'all don't know what's happening for y'all just read the white paper, but you got to read the black paper too. Uh, and all the white right folks that work for me, they, they, they have to read the black press, and then you can see the real deal. That's right. Well, I, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's right. See, we can throw out that little tiger act out there in Vegas. That gives one point five million dollars a night, huh? And then the tiger jump, the white press all over America. Oh, what could those tigers do that? We thought they were friends. The black press said, "What took them so long?" That's all. They all wild beasts. So <laughs> was it two months ago, right down the road, Chicago, six black. Convicts escaped from death row. And the Chicago Tribune had big headlines. Six murdered inmates escaped from death row. And then they want, you know, white folks, let me get the back. Uh, and did y'all catch it? That's what I want to know. Have you got any beads? I don't give a damn. I don't know. I don't know. I just want to go to jail. And he was In the Chicago Sun Times, they come out and say they broke into Walgreens drugstore. And then the white press tried to philosophize. So uh, they must have been looking for some drugs. Oh, then the black press came out, Chicago defendant, and said they broke into Walgreens drugstore and stole the case of my New York is a Chicago is a United States government is a If a little town in Goose Lake, Tennessee found a cure for AIDS, the world would be the past. So don't think just because it's small. The same universal God force that shines on the richest people in the world also shines on the force. And I thank the black church for the two of the most powerful forces in the history of America has always been the black woman and the black church. Yeah. I mean, to this day, the black church is the only institution in America that don't have to check with white folks to find out what time they can open or what time they can close. So to you black ministers, I say thank you. Y'all should take a whole lot of black folks. I was a black minister, most of the black folks didn't even get in my church because I know you. <laughs> yeah, you know, get your little paycheck and then pay the whole white racist system. You pay your racist car note off, the, the racist utility company, and then you're going to come to Brother Greg and give me some change. <laughs> That's my church. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think y'all pay for you got in about a block down the street. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't you pay before you get in the movie? And if you don't like the movie, do you get your money back? <laughs> so, black ministers, they really tolerate it. And then, you like, you be in church all your life. Good Christian sisters, but you got an old, no good brother. That ain't never out there selling drugs, and then that nigga get gunned down, and you gonna come to the minister talk about, uh, can we bury my brother yeah. in this church? And the minister say, that. Yeah, I wish you'd come to my church today and talk to that That's right now. Take that nigga back on the corner, and, say, and let me come down there and preach his view. The nigga gone. There be no more drugs so here on this side by him. And then y'all get offended over the word nigga because you want. Uh, 
Yes, sir. I like what I see here. But there's some people going to come behind you and throw you can be part of this. They're going to ask you, what's your qualification? Right. I'm not praying to it. Don't tell me because you love me or you my mama. You're going to operate on me. You don't qualify. But what we got here is better than what we have, but this ain't your action. Why are we in jail in the first place? Good question. You know damn good well, my Lord. I 
I go to China, go to the Christian section, and Jesus looks Chinese, and go to Japan, go to Jesus Christ, go to Japan, I go to Brazil, Jesus Christ looks Brazilian, I come to America, go to the black community, and Jesus Christ is white. That's what's with me in there. And then send me to school without giving me instructions. If I go to Harvard, I'm going to a white, racist, white supremacist school. And if I go to a black school, I'm using them white, racist, supremacist books. That there's no new way for women. That's right. So gay. That's right. Peace movement. Every time I get on a plane and go to a peace movement, I pay tax on my ticket, so I'm paying for these damn bums that dropping on them women and children. I'll say payback. Thank you, God. Hello. But the handful of decent folks, there's a change. United Methodist Church, eh? they're getting ready to have their world convention. 2012. In Richmond, Virginia, at a good side lock on the convention. Millions of dollars. And the church said, no, we're not going there because y'all got a mildly team that's called the Braves. We've got compassion for our Indian brothers. That's right. Mm -hmm. They said, we're not picking on you. We would never bring it to Washington, D.C. because you got a football team called the Redskins and we would never take it to Atlanta because you got a baseball team called the Braves. Here, things are beginning to change. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't buy Watch the Redskins, but if this Indian would have took that casino money three years ago when the Washington Dead Skins were for sale and bought them and changed the name to the nigga Hunkies, all y'all would be upset. <laughs> How about criminals? Criminals? Hmm? That you ain't gonna mess with. Washington Times. His white press said this, and you ain't gonna go damn right about it, or he know they were cheap. But up until September 11, the greatest act of terror in the history of America was what happened in Oklahoma. The FBI is making mortgage payments on Terry Nichols' home after he was arrested for conspiring to blow up the Oklahoma City Federal Building. Court documents show a Justice Department spokeswoman saying she did not know immediately why the government was making the payments, nor how much. You didn't know a bunch of punks. But if this was the NAACP That's right. or some poor white illness, y'all right. couldn't get out of here fast enough to ask the question. But you ain't going to mess with power. Huh? It's a game. <laughs> New Orleans. Katrina. Yeah. <laughs> the man was black man. And no, nobody asked him what happened to your house. Nobody asked him about his family. Why? Because three weeks before Katrina, they bought him a house in Dallas. And I got to come here and tell you that. The New York Times, the Washington Post, don't tell you. And then he was doing an interview. And he said, he told a reporter, Associated Press, if the CIA sent me something next week and you don't see me no more. But the lady said on CNN, I fear the CIA might take me out. Just about. Since they got y'all believing this crap was legitimate. And preachers running around preaching like what happened there was an act of God. When y'all gonna get tired of making God your people? Come on, brother. Woo! Come on. That's, That's right. right. Woo! Tornado hit here today. Y'all can run to the church as you want. Mm -hmm. I'm going where I know I'm gonna be safe. The whole house. <laughs> the name. Well, have y'all ever read my whole house? Like that? You ever heard somebody say hit the bank and I saw money running? Here, let's talk about some real stuff. 
Dios me estaba pidiendo que le fue a decir. ¿Te tiene el corte de power? That's right. Tú no corte de power. Tell you again and try to tell y'all that's right. That not one black Democrat or white Democrat came to her to finish. But when that little punk, cocaine snort, that's what he went to Mayo Clinton for. Give it! They carried him home. And nobody has apologized to Cynthia for telling us the truth. That's right. The same cops, it wasn't like the Washington DC cop and the Capitol cop, the same one who she had to run with is the same one. That's right. That's what the Kennedy for. And I keep trying to tell you about it, but when you get messed up, you got to do damage control. Y'all be coming with that old ghetto. That don't work in white society. Kennedy said, I was taking this medicine, I woke up in the middle of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, people, I don't get up in the morning and start walking. They walk naked, they don't get dressed. <laughs> He said, I, I was on my way to vote. Huh? Uh -huh, that's good. <laughs> because in your United States Constitution, it says a senator or Congress cannot be arrested on their way to or on their way from voting. Uh -huh. That's even when he lied. Congress needs right, got no doctor's degree, and that boy's whole cat. They call her Condi if you need black folks to be around with that. They never call a man an all-white daddy. That's right. Daddy be no daddy. That's right. That's right. They call him who kissed you that thug. Doctor him who kissed you. Right. But you want to tell your black children, you got to learn how to speak good English. That ain't what's keeping me out of work. That's right. That's right. You got a white boy, governor of California, can't even pronounce the state.
with a president that became president because he had 357 vote margin and had 750,000 votes in that state that came vote. You think if they could have voted, that thug would be in the White House? Come on. The game, the game. Texas, 750,000. Different franchise. Virginia, 300,000. Washington State, 200,000. Mississippi, 100,000. Tennessee, 100,000. Alabama, 250,000. Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky, 150,000. And we're going to go all over the world trying to teach the world about democracy. Okay, that's right. And you feel comfortable with it, yeah. black right. folks? Right. All right. All the white folks who have a nuclear bomb with them niggas in our range, I'm going to give you one too. You go crazy with it. Right. Now, hell, you going to tell me you can buy a Rolls Royce and I got a Rolls Royce money and tell me I can't have one? Right. Get rid of yours that I might consider not making money. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I, am I so free and my research team is so good? We know that our brain is getting that stuff from them German scientists. So again, I called a friend of mine last night in the interview. He said, what's a gallon of gasoline cost? I said, 12 cents a gallon. 12 cents a gallon. Why, you over here crying. What's it cost in Iraq? Five cents a gallon. It's a game victory. For some way I say to you, you got a big job. But it's because of what you do. And if you don't believe that, look at the civil rights movement. Most of you really don't know that much about it because of the white racist, insane sexual system, then I'm going to tell you what. But if this planet lasts 10 billion years, when America will cease to exist, just like Persia and the Roman Empire, the only reason they'll have to mention America. I don't have to tell you what Martin Luther King and this great movement came from. That's right. Yeah. I was a little boy in St. Louis, Missouri. Four years old. I couldn't read. Couldn't write. Couldn't read a map. I didn't know St. Louis and Kansas City was in the same state, but I knew where Jerusalem was because of the man named Jesus. That's what this movement was about. Go back 40 years. In this time, we couldn't sit here today and talk about it. Go back 40 years ago. If you don't believe, you have the power to do it. Just a handful of us. They was blowing up everything. Every time I went to Mississippi, I knew I'd die. Thank God I went anyway. Yes, sir. King and them knew where it was going. It was about love and forgiveness. Hmm? They knew I didn't. Nobody could have told me then when I was running from my wife in Mississippi from them redneck cracker shells that I could stand here today and tell you the head of the Mississippi State Troopers at this moment is a black man. <laughs> head of social service in Mississippi is a black woman. So it's just on a handful of people. That's right. Beautiful. They say we can do it. Right. And it ain't no accident that 98% of those black folks in the forefront of that movement had reverend in front of their name before they had PhD. <laughs> we got a big job. And we don't have much time. No, that's right. Mark Lippin was made in white beer companies, but only sold in black people. Like, you black folks are you don't even check it out? No? But you always talk about crime. There's a thing they put in it called manganese, and once you get too much manganese, they make you kill your mom. I live in a country that injected syphilis into 600 black men, put smallpox in Indian blankets, then the AIDS come around, and you black folks don't even suspect nothing? That's what I do. <laughs> so I believe in you and just say, keep up with what you're doing, but let me just give you this here. When you get on the internet, punch this up, Robert Gallo, G-A-L-L-O. 
in April 1948, Robert Bell filed for United States patent application for his invention of HIV and AIDS virus. So let me tell you all something. My truth don't have to be validated by the way. Y'all punch it up and let them white folks tell you. That's right. Patent is public domain. No. Huh? But for those of y'all that don't want to do no work no. for his invention of AIDS and HIV, the patent number for his invention is 464-7773. Details of which can be found on the United States Patent Office website. Okay? So y'all worry about these little talk criminals over there? Right. Huh? <laughs> and the same folks that brought you that didn't bring you bird flu? Yeah. <laughs> My oldest daughter was getting her doctor's degree at the London School of Economics, and I just happened to pass by the, the London Times. And the front page story, money, May 11, 1987, smallpox vaccine triggers virus in all of Africa, and they go on to say the World Health Organization on a 13-year program mastermind the system that while they thought they was wiping out smallpox that was injecting on things. Come on, bro. Uh, and you black folk think you so damn spiritual. Come on. That's right. Strong. But y'all want to believe that you got some kind of law. Right. And the way you saw it. Old niggas walking around talking, uh uh, young folks, uh uh, y'all should have been here doing the good old days. But don't even look, I'm born 1932. The only thing about the good old days was they left. Let me tell you, if a white woman accuses me of raping her, and I'm about to fight for 
before we get our diamond ring, I'm gonna lay so smart she go out and get two more white <laughs> Because people are going to come to you one day. Hmm? Understand what you do. Hmm? Who would have believed 45 years ago when a white woman couldn't fly a commercial airline? When a white woman couldn't be a commercial airline pilot? When a black woman couldn't be a student? When a black man couldn't fly a commercial airline pilot? The only thing a white woman could do at the airport a stewardess and she had to look like something out of the center page of Playboy magazine. And because of this civil rights movement, and that bill came through and it didn't say for Negroes only, we liberated all of y'all and nobody's told us thanks. That's right. Not that we need it. Right. My mama told me you don't have to say thank you, but saying thanks is good manners in America it never did. Love you. God bless you.